This month marks Crash Bandicoot's 20th anniversary, the first game released on September 9th, 1996 for the original PlayStation, a year to the day after the system's initial launch. It was Naughty Dog's seventh game and their first big hit prompted the team to work with Sony in order to make three more games of the series before leaving Crash to third parties and ultimately degrading the series over time. Now in this video retrospective I will go over 15 out of the 18 games of the series. Those three missing are mobile games so I couldn't really capture them in footage. I will say that Nitro Kart 2 which released in 2010 is the last game in the series to be released. At E3 we saw Sony announce that the next Skylanders has some crash stuff in it and the remastering the first three games for the PS4. But this will go over some of the older ones and I'll kind of go by history of the developers of which there's a lot of murky stuff in there. But I'll go by release date first and talk a little bit about each. And this first one of course is the original but I'm going to jump right into the next one which of course is Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back which released on October 31st 1997 for the PS1. That's right, it released on Halloween of all days. Very, very strange. But it was the first game that I played in the franchise, and I didn't actually go back to the first one till much later, and it's kind of differing eyes. It's not that great of a game compared to 2, where they really hammered out a lot of stuff, especially the story. Made it very funny. I played this one and the next one, Crash Bandicoot Warped, which released in November the 4th, 1998 for the PS1. Those two games I played back to back with my family, especially my brother and sister. We love those games. My brother got a PS1 somehow, and I believe some of the first games he had was Crash Bandicoot 2 and Final Fantasy 7. And, ah, oh, just a joy. We kind of all grew up with the Nintendo, so we all were like Mario kids, essentially. And we never dealt with Sonic, uh, essentially, except me. I went to, you know, friends' houses and whatnot. But Crash Bandicoot was kind of the evolution that we got into in terms of 3D platforming. And they are still pretty awesome. I really like Crash Bandicoot 2 and Warped. Although they are pretty challenging. There are some cheap deaths and whatnot, but they're... They're funny, I think they still look pretty good. Not timeless, but I think they got some great quality to them overall. The next and last game Naughty Dog developed was Crash Team Racing, which released on September 30th, 1999 for the PS1. As you can see, a year, every single time, we got a Crash game from Naughty Dog. And I didn't play this at the time, but going back to it now, I think it also holds up. It is a fantastic kart racer that rivals all the Mario Kart series. Of course, I'm not going to put it in line and do a face-to-face -face of which one's better, but I think it is a very good racing game that it really needs to be. And there's like a story too, which whatever, but I think it's a good racing game and uh, I think it holds up compared to some of the other racing games that came out. But now let's move on to third party kind of, when Crash Bandicoot was developed by Eurocom and Sony's last published game, which was Crash Bash, which released November 6, 2000 for the PS1. Now, Eurocom has a very weird history in development, not a lot of hits in there, and Crash Bash was essentially the Mario Party of the series, and it's not great. It's just kind of a battle of good versus evil the bad guys you can play and the good guys, just kind of like Crash Team Racer where you can be a lot of those characters. And you just do a bunch of mini games. It's not awful, but it's not great either. Now let's move on to the next game, which was the next game that I experienced after Warped, which of course is Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, which released on October 29th, 2001 for the PS2 and it was later ported to the Xbox and GameCube. Now this is of, of course when it really went third party and they went to different consoles. Now I remember renting The Wrath of Cortex with my sister. I used to stay with her every summer, every once in a while, and uh, we used to rent games together. I love this game a lot, but I remember the load times were horrendous. And going back to it now, 
yes, they are horrendous, but because I love the series so much, I kind of ignore them. And without those low times, I think it's actually a pretty good game. And Traveler's Tales, of course, a lot of people know them now for the LEGO games. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's a bad game. I think it is a good game, I suppose, for the series to go. But unfortunately, we have a dive from there. Now, let's skip ahead to Vicarious Visions, which is the next developer we'll be looking at, with Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure, released on February 25th, 2002 for the Game Boy Advance. Then, of course, we have Crash Bandicoot 2 and Trance, released on January 7th, 2003 for the Game Boy Advance. And Crash Natural Kart, released November 11th, 2003 for the Game Boy Advance. PS2, GameCube, Xbox, later ported to the Engage and mobile devices. And last, from Vicarious Visions, we have Crash Bandicoot Purple, Ripto's Rage, released on June 3rd, 2004 for the Game Boy Advance. And of course, that was a collaboration between Crash and Spyro, and Spyro got his own orange adventure as well in the Crash world, and Crash was in Spyro's world. Anyway... Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, and Crash Bandicoot Purple are all side-scrolling platformer games, and Crash Natural Kart is a pretty whatever kart racer. It's okay, compared to Crash Team Racing, it's blah. The other games are decent side-scrollers. They look okay for Game Boy Advance games, but they kind of tried to capture the whole Donkey Kong Country effect on the Super Nintendo, where they kind of tried to use more realistic 3D graphics for a Game Boy Advance game, but they didn't go cute and like good pixels, so it kind of looks like trash. It plays okay, they feel like rehashes of stuff before for the PS1 games. They're just fine, and really they kind of dictate really what has become of Crash in all these years. I, I never played them, this is the only time I ever played all four of these games for this retrospective here. But let's go back to Traveler's Tales with Crash Twin Sanity, which released on August 30th, 2004 for the PS2 and Xbox. And I always wanted to play this one, but again, I never got my hands on it until this retrospective. And it was essentially Cortex and Crash kind of team up. First you play as Crash, and then you kind of fight Cortex, and then you wind up together, and you have to do like a bunch of things together, you can join by the hip. There's a couple of other games that kind of did similar things, where you had two people tied together, and you use them to do a bunch of things. I guess Banjo-Kazooie, essentially? I don't know if that's what they're really going for in 2004. I don't think that's where they really got the idea from, but there's been other games besides those two, except those two actually liked each other, and this is just kind of a, oh look, they're working together kind of thing. And it's better than the Game Boy Advance games, of course, but not as good as The Wrath of Cortex, in my opinion, and it's just kind of a weird idea that kind of didn't pan out. I guess. Uh, but let's move on to Radical Entertainment's games. First of which we have Crash Tag Team Racing, released on October 19th, 2005 for the PS2 and Xbox, and later ported to the GameCube and PSP. This is an alright racer, it's better than Nitro Kart, and there's actually some platforming segments as well, but because this is primarily a racing game, I think they're oddly implemented, essentially. Uh, again, the racing is fine, but just captures nowhere near Mario Kart or even Crash Team Racing, so whatever. Next, we have Crash of the Titans, which released on October 4th, 2007. Whew. For the PS2, 360, Wii, Game Boy Advance, and later released to the DS and PSP. That is a lot, and kind of shows you how much they kind of cared about Crash in that they just really wanted to make some money however they could. Now anyway, Crash the Titans was the first game that kind of radically redesigned Crash. They gave him a mohawk, they kind of made him into like a punk kind of thing. I think he looks super weird. It's a 3D platformer, so I guess it's more along the lines of, uh, I don't know, I guess other games the series had done it before, but it reminded me a little bit of kind of Jack and Daxter, but it's, yeah, it's whatever. The same goes for 
Crash Mind Over Mutant, which released on October 7, 2008 for the PS2, 360, Wii, DS, and PSP. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know really what to say about Mind Over Mutant. The same thing, weird design, it plays okay. I mean, Crash, I mean, Titans and Mind Over Mutant are okay, but they have nowhere near the same affinity I, of course, have for the original three games. Again, don't think they're awful, but I don't think they're that fun either. In the last game, which was kind of a sequel to Crash Bash, which was Crash Boom Bang, which released on October 10th, 2006 for the DS, and this game was developed by Dips, of which I have no idea what else they've done, and they kind of came out of nowhere. So that, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that is six developers, and there's been a variety of publishers that helped along the way as well, but that's Crash. And uh, I really hope there's remasters or something. I'm curious about Skylanders, but uh, I would really like a new game developed by Naughty Dog or just a good Sony third party. Just something. Get them away from Activision's clutches. It is torture to watch some of this stuff. So, there you have it. Happy 20th anniversary to Crash Bandicoot. You've had a hard, hard life. And hopefully you wake up from your weird drunken stupor and um, have a comeback. But uh, that's all for now. Did you know that was a Reaction Examiner video? If you liked it, you should subscribe to me to keep up with everything that I'm doing. Also, if you have some other interests, like sex for example, check out Tom Mops, which is a comedy sex podcast thing wherein my best friend and I check out the weird and abnormal and the erotic. And of course you should support me on Patreon because hey, I want to make the channel better and I want your help to do so. Plus, if you want to check out my writing, check out Game Jerk where I have archives and new stuff for all projects, okay? You can find all the stuff and more in the description with the links below. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.